when God decided to create a world, what did he do? He contracted himself. Meaning, before he decided to create a world, there was only God. But then, for whatever reason, he decided to create worlds. How does he do that? He contracts himself and he leaves a space for another, for worlds. As soon as God contracts himself and leaves a space for other, for another, this is where everything is introduced. Division is introduced. Eventually, time and space will be introduced. Going up and going down, more and less. All of these ideas are introduced as soon as God contracts himself and leaves a space for another. Today, we're going to discuss the idea of going up and going down. What does it mean to go up and go down? What does it mean that God goes up and he goes down? In the terms of Chassidus, it's the Oireis and the Kalim. It's the lights and the vessels. What does it mean? A light by nature goes up. The light is always drawn to its source. What does it mean it's drawn to its source? It constantly wants to go up back to its source. A keli, a vessel, is the opposite. The vessel goes down. He wants to receive. He wants to take it within himself. He wants to keep it down here. The most common example is our body and our soul. Our soul reaches up back to its creator, and the body likes to go down. The soul wants to go to shul and daven and learn and the body wants to eat potato chips and have a good time. That's called going down. Well, the Rebbe Rashab says in today's chapter that now there's a struggle. You have a part of God, which is the light, that wants to go up, and there's a part of God, which is the vessel, that wants to go down. How are they going to cooperate? Here is where one ingredient is necessary. It's called beetle. Beetle means to be nullified. Beetle means to put yourself aside for a higher cause. The light by nature wants to go up. The vessel by nature wants to go down. Both of them need beetle. They need to put themselves aside for a higher cause. The light by nature wants to go up. Well, now it's going to have to go down. The Kaylee, the vessel by nature wants to go down. Well, he needs beetle. He has to put himself aside for a higher cause and he has to go up. And this is how the two will meet. Take, for example, a, a painting. If the color black says it's only going to be black, the painting, not going to be a nice painting. If the color blue says the painting is going to be only blue, not going to be a nice painting. But if the color black puts himself aside a little bit and gives space for blue, and blue puts himself aside a little bit and gives space for black and yellow. They are all devoted to a higher cause, a beautiful painting. This is what the Rebbe Rashab defines as Ulam Hatikun, a perfect world. You want to have a perfect world? All the little pieces need beetle. They need to put themselves aside for a higher cause for the perfect world. This is the world of Tikkun that we learn today, as opposed to the world of Tehu, which we're going to learn tomorrow. In Tehu, every individual is perfect. Black is perfect. Blue is perfect. They don't want to cooperate. They're lacking beetle. They don't want to put themselves aside for a higher cause. Tikkun is the perfect world, where the Oir, although by nature wants to go up, puts himself aside, goes down. The Kaili that by nature wants to go down, puts himself aside for the higher cause, for the Pnimie Sakavone, for the real reason why the Abishta created the world. And that is Elam Hatikun, the perfect organized world. Chavis.